بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We are in the month of Dhul Hijjah. And in this month of Dhul Hijjah, the Hujjaj, they are going for the Hajj. The entire Hajj, if we look at it, and I want to bring your attention to some of these verses in Surah Al Baqarah. The entire Hajj and the entire you can say, axis of Islam revolves around the story of Abraham. The axis of Islam revolves around the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. If you look at Dhul Hijjah and the Hajj, Dhul Hijjah and the Hajj, if any, anyone was at my you know, uh, Friday Jummah khutbah, the entire Hajj is, the, is the, uh, the following in the footsteps of Abraham. The seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, the whole Hajj that we do, we are reenacting the footsteps of Abraham in which he made the greatest demonstration of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the greatest submission of sacrifice that any human being made for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at that, if we look at, we go to the Hajj, you see Maqam Ibrahim. How many have been for Umrah or Hajj? MashaAllah, almost everybody. Maqam Ibrahim, you see Maqam Ibrahim? These are the footsteps of Ibrahim. There's no Maqam Muhammad. Is there Maqam Muhammad? I didn't see any Maqam Muhammad. The whole place is Maqam Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. I'm not undermining the messenger, but I'm trying to bring your attention to something. If we look there, Maqam Ibrahim. The footsteps of Abraham. And Allah says in these verses in Surah Baqarah, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى And take the place of Abraham as your place of prayer. The Maqam Ibrahim, the station of Abraham, make that a place of prayer. Hajar al-Aswad. You know what Hajar al-Aswad? Hajar al-Aswad has various different things to it, various different stories that are narrated. But the Hajar al-Aswad, to make a long story short, is something that was given to Ibrahim alayhi salam from Jannah. This is the aqidah of the Muslims, right? In one of the, in the history of Islam, some people, some criminals, they stole the Hajar al-Aswad, it broke to pieces, and the only thing that's left is what we see of it today. The Hajar al-Aswad is a stone that was, that was given to Abraham as a gift from Jannah, what the ulama mention about that is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he took the covenant of the souls. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant in the alim arwah and he says, Alastu bi rabbikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought all of the souls together. And he said, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? The stone was there and it recorded their answer. And they said, Qalu bala. Oh Allah, of course, definitely, you are our Lord. And it was recorded in that. That stone was a witness of that. That stone was brought and it was commanded by Allah to be placed, commanded to Ibrahim to be placed at that corner so that everybody who comes and he touches that stone, part of the tawaf is what? Istilamul hajar. Bismillahi, Allahu Akbar. You make ishara to it and you kiss your hands or you kiss it. And this was the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. He took his staff, as is mentioned in the hadith of Bukhari, he was doing tawaf on his camel because it used to be gravel. It wasn't like marble like now. It was gravel. He took his staff, he touched the tip of it, and he kissed the stone. Bismillahi, Allahu Akbar. And Umar radiallahu said, he said, Oh stone, I know you are nothing but a stone. If the Messenger of Allah would have never kissed you, I would have never kissed you. This is, the, this is how much they put their aql to the side and they did what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa taught them. In other words, all of these things, the point that I'm making, all of these things was established from Abraham, from the time of Abraham, from the tradition of Abraham. Then what else we have? We have there, right? The Kaaba. The whole Kaaba there. What is that? That's the building of Muhammad? No. Idhiyar... وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ What does it say here? 
This is in actually ayat back to back to back in Surah Baqarah. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ And remember, when Ibrahim and Ismail, they were raising the foundation of this bait. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ And remember, وَإِسْمَعِيلِ What did they say? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَك وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ This whole deen, Christians name themselves followers of Christ, Buddhists followers of Buddha, right? Jews goes back to, right, Yahuda, one of the awlad of Yaqub, Yahuda, Yahud. But Muslims are not Muhammadis. Interesting. The only people that call us Muhammadis are Orientalists, the Muhammadans. That is also from their jahl, complete ignorant. Completely ignorant. Nowhere in the Quran is the word Muhammadi mentioned. Nowhere in the Hadith is the word Muhammadi mentioned. Nowhere the Fuqaha has mentioned the word. Yes, we're mentioned Ummati Muhammad. We are the Ummat of Muhammad. It doesn't say we are Muhammadi. Does it? Anybody heard that? I never heard that before. However, Look at the Quran. Abraham is the one who has given you the name Muslims. And in this, and remember when Abraham and Ismail, they built and they were raising the foundation of the house. Yani the Kaaba. The first house that was erected for the worship of Allah was in Mecca. This was by Abraham and Ismail. I want to bring your attention to something. What is the maqam and the status of Sayyidina Muhammad? But first understand this intro, what I'm going to be telling you. Look at our Quran, look at our religion, look at our Hajj. Okay, so even that house that you go to visit, that's not the building of Muhammad. It's the building of Abraham. And all the monotheistic faiths, whether we are, you are Christian, whether you are Jew, whether you are any of the monotheistic faiths in any of their denominations, they believe and they honor Abraham. They honor Abraham. He is the father of the prophets. He is the father of the monotheistic faiths. And if you look at Islam, it's not Muhammadanism. It's not Arabianism. It's not Arabianism, Quraishism. Prophetism it has nothing to do with Muhammad. You know, being, in other words, Audhu Billah, he is a, our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa he is the prophet of this deen. However, to, to understand that the center of this, right, is actually Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And it continues. Look at the Kaaba, look at the Hajar, look at the Maqam Ibrahim, right? Look at Mina. You know, the, the hujjaj, they go to Mina. What is Mina? They go to the Jamarat. They pelt the stones. What is pelting of the stones? Is it something that the Prophet ﷺ did? It was something that Abraham did. Look at the Udhiyah, the Qurbani. We do the sacrifice on the 10th of the Hijjah. 10th, 11th, 12th. This is the Udhiyah. Why do we do this? Even the Sahaba asked the Messenger of Allah on the day of Qurbani, on the day of Udhiyah, on the 10th of the Hijjah, they were sacrificing the animals. So then the Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, ma hadhihi al-adahi, Ya Rasulullah. What is all this qurbani, O Messenger of Allah? What did he say? Sunnatu abikum Ibrahim. Sunnatu abikum Ibrahim. This is the practice of your father, Abraham. Allahu Akbar. Look at what, look at what the message, look at the function of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to bring your attention to all of this. And after Abraham, he built the Kaaba. And after he settled there. And he completed this very glorious task. Can you imagine? Right? 
and the first house that was built was, uh, was, was the Kaaba and anyone who enters it, it is a guidance for all of mankind till the day of judgment and anyone who enters it will be safe and so on and so on and so on. Then the dua that he makes, look at what Ibrahim, the dua that Ibrahim alayhi salam makes. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Oh Allah, we built your house, but accept it from us. This is such a great thing that you have given us, but accept it from us. Indeed, you hear our prayers, and indeed, you know our intentions. Then what did he say? رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ Make us true Muslims. Make us true people who submit to you, oh Allah. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ And make our progeny true Muslims to you. And then, وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا and oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teach us our rights. What is the rights? R-I-T-E-S. Teach us the specific way that we should do pilgrimage. Every religion has a pilgrimage. Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua to Allah. Oh Allah, teach us our manasik. Teach us the specific way that we do pilgrimage. Every religion has a pilgrimage. Oh Allah, you teach us. What is the way you want us to do pilgrimage? And you know what our pilgrimage is? What is the pilgrimage of Muslims? And I want to share this with you because there was a friend of the family. He went for Hajj. He came back and then he told me, I said, how was the Hajj? Oh, Allah be adhan, machum. It was wonderful, but we went from one place to another and then from one place to another. I don't know what was going on. We're just like, like a ping pong ball. I'm going from one place and then Mina and Muzdalifah and you stay one night there and then you leave there. And I don't know what's going on. No, I loved it. No, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm just, I'm just expressing to you what's in my heart. I said, no, no problem. I said, what is that? Why do you have to be at that time at Muzdalifa, at a specific place, then you have to be in Arafah on the 9th, and you have to be Mina in the 10th. What is this? These are those specific places where Ibrahim salam stepped, and Ibrahim salam walked, and Ibrahim salam prayed, and Ibrahim salam fought the temptation of, of, of shaitan, and Ibrahim salam then sacrificed his son, and Ibrahim salam went and made dua, and then Ibrahim salam went and made tawaf. Allah loved this demonstration of love so much that it was preserved till the day of judgment and it was made our manasik. It was made our manasik. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was the reviver and the preserver till the day of judgment of Millatu Ibrahim. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And Allah chose Ibrahim as his friend because every sacrifice that he was put in front of every test that he was placed under he passed that test and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this when he says ibrahim rabbuhu and remember when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested abraham with all these tests and he completed it in the best way then allah says inni ja'iluka lin nasi imama i will choose you as a imam for the people after you have proved yourself if it was his son, he sacrificed his son. If it was his wife, he sacrificed his wife. Inni. He says that I leave my family. But look at Abraham. He says, oh, oh my Lord, I am leaving my wife and my son in this valley which is unfertile. It doesn't have any water and it doesn't have any green leaf or tree. In the Baytik al Muharram. Was the house built at that time? This is ajeeb. The house wasn't even built yet. And Abraham is saying, Oh Allah, I am leaving my son and my, my wife in your Baytik al Muharram. There was no Baytik al Muharram. So from this we understand Ibrahim alayhi salam knew that there is a very great plan. You see this? When he was leaving, Ismail and Hajar, there was no bait. There was no bait. Was there a bait? There was no bait. This is a very interesting point. From this we understand that Abraham wasn't leaving his son, his newborn son, and his wife in the middle of nowhere for no reason. There was a great divine plan of leaving them there. That land, that city, that place was built upon sacrifice. It was built upon submission. The submission of what? The submission of one man, one woman, one child. This is what an ummah is made of. Men, women, and children. Isn't that so? Or it's made up of, you know, man's best friend as well. Add that addition. Not this ummah. Man, women, and child. 
This is what an ummah is made up of. And it took the submission of a man, Abraham, and a woman, Hajar, and that child, Ismail. Abraham and Hajar made their sacrifice, but Ismail was too young to make any sacrifice. Did he make that decision that he wants to stay there? No, he was crying. He said, give me water. I'm thirsty. And then we know that Hajar, even the, even the Safa and Marwa that we do in Hajj today, that is also from the legacy of Abraham. Subhanallah, think about this. This is not a religion that was made up by people. You can't think this stuff up. Can you think this stuff up? Okay, I'm going to sit down. Hmm, this is really wonderful. Okay, we put this here. Come on, guys. Let's put the Safa Marwa here. This is from the story of Hajar. Okay, Tawaf, this is from uh, Abraham. And it's, you, can't co you can't orchestrate this. Think about it. This is a miracle. You can't orchestrate this stuff. This is ingenious. Who sat there and talked? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 40 years, he was sitting thinking up all this stuff. And then he was in Ghara Hira, you know, and then all of a sudden Jibreel came. He said, oh, I got it now. You know, I got the, the grand mastery plan. You know, this is how we're going to do the Hajj, everybody. We're going to do Safa and Marwa like this. And, you know, this was because of Hajar. And then, uh, you know, we do Tawaf seven times. And then we wear these robes because it's really hot. It's really hot. So we're going to wear these robes. Everybody, white robes. Subhanallah. This is not made up. This is actually, <laughs> subhanallah, divine. This is, wa arina mana sikana. Oh Allah, you show us how to do all of this. And all of this revolves around the life of Abraham. But this is the point that I wanted to come. This is the amazing. This is the cherry on the top. You ready for the cherry on the top? This is the final. This is reflections upon the beloved. Wabaathihim rasulan. Rabbana. Abraham is making dua. Rabbana wabaathihim rasulan minhum. Oh Allah, oh our Lord, send to them. Send to these people who will be in this vicinity, a messenger from amongst themselves. Who made this dua? This is the dua of Abraham. Rabbana wabaathihim rasulan minhum. Yatlu alayhim ayatika. Who recite upon them your Quran. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And he will teach them the book. وَالْحِكْمَةَ And he will teach them the halal and the haram and guidance. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he will purify them. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, you are the mighty and the wise. This is the, the point here. That Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi salam was what? Ibrahim alayhi salam actually made dua for the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is he? And when the Prophet ﷺ, he was explaining about himself, and this hadith is an authentic hadith, he mentions, Innama ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim wa bushra akhi Isa. Do you, do you know what I am? O oh, my people, I am but the prayer of my father Abraham, and I am the glad tidings of my brother Jesus. Wait. Uh, and I give you glad tidings of a messenger that will come after me whose name will be Ahmad. So when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is introducing himself, he is explaining who he is, and he is telling the people, so he is describing himself. How does he describe himself? He says, Innama ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim. I am the prayer of my father Abraham. And I am the glad tidings and the prophecy of my brother Jesus. This is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And that is why this deen, this Islam, what is it called? قُلْ بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا When you look at the tafsir of Millat Ibrahim, the way of Abraham, the religion of Abraham, when you look it up in the tafsir it says Millat Ibrahim a al-Islam. The other word for Islam is Millat Ibrahim. And Millat Ibrahim is Islam. And brothers and sisters, if we don't understand this, there will be a big khalal. There will be a big void in our faith. Understand this, very important. It is very important for us as Muslims to realize that what our legacy is. Our legacy is the legacy of Abraham. And what was the legacy of Abraham? The legacy of Abraham was sacrifice. If you could summarize the entire life of Ibrahim if you could summarize the entire 
existence of Abraham and the message of Abraham, it was nothing but sacrifice. Where Allah Ta'ala commanded him after many years, sacrifice your son for me. He goes and he says, Inni ara fil manami anni mada tara. Oh my son, I see in my dream that I'm sacrificing you. Tell me, what do you think? What do you think? He says, Qala ya abati ma tu'mar. Oh my father, do as you've, you've, command, you've been commanded. Satajidini insha'Allah min as You'll find me from the patient ones. What did Hajar say? I'm leaving my family in the middle of this unfertile valley. She said, oh my husband, did Allah command you to do this? And he shook his head. He didn't even answer by words. He shook his head. She, then she said, Then Allah will never waste us. Allah will never let us to perish. This is the sacrifice of Abraham. And this is the sacrifice of Hajar. And this is the sacrifice of Ismail. And an ummah. It cannot be an ummah. If the men don't sacrifice and have deen in their lives, and the women don't sacrifice and have this deen in their lives, and also the children as well. The submission of all three of these categories is necessary to make an ummah. If the men are good and the women or children are off, problem. If the women or children are on, the men are off, big problem. If the men and women are good, the children are off, this is also a big problem. For, 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 for an ummah, for a community to be strong, the deen and the faith and the practice of the men and the women and the children must be in, in, in harmony. It must be in harmony. And because the faith of Ibrahim and the faith of Hajar and the faith of Ismail and the sacrifice of Ibrahim and Hajar and Ismail, it was there. That is why we have a deen today. That is why we have a religion today. That is why we have a way and a path today. Otherwise, if these three people would have in any way not submitted in any way, shape or form, we would not have what we have today in the name of Islam. So this Islam, this is not anything new. This is but the preservation of the sacrifice of Ibrahim, the legacy of Ibrahim, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the dua of Ibrahim. And this is the millat of Ibrahim. And he was the reviver of the legacy of Ibrahim. Bas. And he did not come with anything new. Qul ma kuntu min rusuli Tell them, O oh Muhammad, I am not something new. Tell them, O oh Muhammad, I am not something... I came about some new prophet coming with a new message. This is not who I am. Ma kuntu bid'am min rusul I didn't come with you with anything new. And this is why it's been mentioned. وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ Immediately after that. وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهِ Look at the verses that were revealed after this dua. Oh Allah, رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ Abraham's dua. Oh Allah, send to, send to them a messenger from amongst them, yani from the children of Ishmael. Send a messenger to them. What will he do? He'll do four things. Yatlu alayhim ayatik. Wa kitaba wal hikmah wa yuzakihim. He will teach them the book. He will teach them the hikmah, yani the hadith. Imam al Shafi'i rahimahullah made tafsir of this ayat. Yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikmata. This is also for those people who are having problem with hadith. People, can't, people are losing sleep because of hadith nowadays. No lose sleep. You're gonna, if you're losing sleep over hadith, it's not good. Ask. If you don't know, ask. One, one thing that's mentioned here, Imam al-Shafi'i said, يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ In Arabic language, wow comes from mughayara. Wow comes to show the difference between one thing and another thing. You can't say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may oh Allah send to them a messenger. The messenger will teach them the book and he will teach them the wisdom, the hikmat. Okay, so the book, you guys understand what is the book, right? What's the book? There's only one book that was revealed to Muhammad. What is that? That's the Quran. But what is hikmah? Yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba 
kitaba wal hikmata. He teaches them the kitab and wal hikma. It's not, oh, he teaches them the book and then the wisdom of the book. The wisdom of the book. The book is wisdom in itself. Why do you need to repeat the book? He's going to teach them the book and then teach them the book again. The wow comes from mughayara. Meaning, yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikmata. He's going to teach them something else other than the book. What is the thing other than the book? This is the sunnah. Imam Shafi'i made tafsir of this. Where did Imam Shafi'i get it from? He was one of the most accepted scholars and fuqaha of this ummah. He wrote the book Ar-Risala. The Risala of Imam Shafi'i. The book was actually written to show the proof of the authority of the sunnah and hadith. Because people from his time started to reject hadith. Say, oh, brother, just give me from the Quran. Don't tell me all this other stuff. All this other stuff. The other stuff is mentioned in the Quran. Allah wa Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Rasul. Rasul Allah. Anyone who obeys the messengers, he is obeyed, obeyed Allah. Yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhum al kitab wal hikmah. The book and the hikmah. What is the hikmah? This is the wisdom. This is the sunnah. This is the halal and the haram. Wa yuzakihim. And you will make the tazkiyah. Then he says, Wa man yargabu an millati Ibrahima illa man safiha nafsa. And anyone who turns away from the way of Abraham, Except he has made a fool of himself. This is immediately after this, where it says, Oh Allah, give them a messenger. The next ayat it says, And anyone who turns away from the millet of Ibrahim, he is the one who has made a fool of himself. Why have you made a fool of yourself? You're a fool because the Prophet is not teaching anything. Look at, if anybody just ponders, any Christian just ponders over the Hajj. He ponders over really Islam and thinks about it. It's all re revolving around Abraham. In other words, if you don't accept this, this is nothing but the reviving of the way of Abraham, who was the father of all the religions. He was the father of all the monotheistic faiths. It mentions sabab nuzul hadhihi al-ayah. The sabab nuzul of this ayah that and no one turns away from the millat of Ibrahim, yani Islam, except the one who is made of absolute fool of himself. How can you do that when Muhammad is not coming with anything new? He has just revived the original deen of Ibrahim, which every other every other monotheistic faith has branched from that. He has just brought you back to the original. Of what it is. It mentions Anna Abdullah ibn Salam da'a ibn Akhihi Maslamata wa Muhajir ila al Islam. Abdullah ibn Salam was a, was a rabbi. He was a Jewish rabbi. He lived in Medina Munawwara. So he called his two nephews to Islam. One of his nephews was named was Maslama, the other one was named, his name was Muhajir. So when he called them to Islam, he says, Qad alim tuma anna Allah ta'ala qala fit taurat. Both of you know, both of you have read the Torah, and in the Torah it says, Inni ba'ithum min waladi Ismail and Nabiyan, Ismuhu Muhammad. You read that in the Torah, that I will send a messenger from the children of Ishmael, his name will be Muhammad. You read that. That is in the Torah. Did you not read that? Faman amana bihi faqad ihtada wa rashad. Wa man lam yu'min bihi famal'unun. Anyone who believes in him, then he'll be guided and he'll be successful. And anyone who disbelieve in him, then he'll be cursed. Did you not read that in the Torah? Oh my nephews. فَأَسْلَمَ مَسْلَمَةُ وَأَبَا مُهَاجِرْ أَنْ يُسْلِمْ So one of them accepted Islam and the other one didn't accept Islam. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى So Allah Ta'ala revealed these verses. وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَا نَفْسَهِ And no one turns away from the millet of Ibrahim except that he's made a fool of himself. And indeed, we have selected him in this dunya. We selected Abraham in this life. And indeed, in the akhirah and in the next life, he will be from the righteous. Why is he? Why is this? Why is Abraham the centerpiece of our faith? This is the reason. 
when his Lord told him, submit. قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He says, I have submitted myself and I have become Muslim to the Lord of the worlds. This is explaining. What is Millati Ibrahim? Submission. That's it. قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ And the same thing did Abraham pass on to his children and to Ya'qub as well. And what did he say? Ya Baniya, O my sons, Inna Allah astafa lakum ad-deen. Allah has chosen. And so look at this, my dear brothers. This is so profound. The Quran is very powerful. It says that the Kaaba was built. Allah commanded them to build the Kaaba. And then it says that Abraham made dua. Oh Allah, send a messenger to them. Then it says that if you don't accept that messenger who revived the way of Abraham, you have got made a complete fool of yourself because he is the one who did it and this prophet has pre preserved it and this prophet has revived it. And then after that, why? Why is this the religion? Why is this the faith? Why should we follow this? Because his Lord told him to submit and he said, I submit to the Lord of the worlds. The whole purpose of this religion and the center of it, the axis of this religion is submission. That's it. O children of Israel, you have no gods besides me. Do not take any god besides me. I am, your, I am thy Lord God. Do not take any gods besides me. The first commandment. This is, what, this is what Islam calls the submission to the first commandment. That's it. Wawassa. And the same thing Abraham, he gave as final bequest to his children on his deathbed. And Yaqub, Ya Baniya, O my sons, Inna Allah astafa lakum ad deen. He calls religion deen. And he calls Islam Milla to Ibrahim. Look at these are all words. We should know these words. Millat Ibrahim is Islam. And then he calls Millat Ibrahim also, he calls it deen. The meaning of deen is kama tadinu tudan. As you do, you shall be done upon. Deen means that which you will get in return. In other words, this deen is whatever you do, you will get in return. Ma tadinu bihi what you believe in, and what you regard that you will be recompensated for. Oh, my sons, indeed Allah has chosen for you this deen. فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Millat Ibrahim has been mentioned, deen has been mentioned, submission has been mentioned, and he says, and do not die unless you are Muslims. Look at all this correlation. It's basically synonyms. But these synonyms, all of them, when they're put together, they give us an idea. That this deen is the Millat Ibrahim. The centerpiece of it is the sacrifice of Ibrahim. This, this sacrifice of Ibrahim and this legacy of Ibrahim will be preserved by a prophet who was the dua of Ibrahim. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The rites of this religion and the pilgrimage was also the dua of Ibrahim. And it is called Islam. And the followers are called Muslims. And you should not die except on this. Am kuntum Yaqub al maut, Or were you present, O people, when Yaqub had reached his deathbed? Now let me ask you a question. Yaqub was what? A prophet or a normal person? Huh? He was a prophet of Allah. Who are his sons? They're also prophets of Allah. What is he telling them? Is he telling them something new? He's not telling them anything new. Look at what he's saying to them. Oh my sons, what will you worship after me? A prophet who was the son of a prophet is telling his sons who are also prophets, Oh my sons, what are you going to worship after me? We're going to worship your Lord. And we're going to worship the Lord of your, fa of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. That one God we will worship, and we will be to him Muslims. This is Islam. And then he calls them again an ummah. 
Tilka ummatun qad khalat. That was an ummah and a nation that passed. Laha ma kasabat wa lakum ma kasabtum. For them is what they earned and for you will be what you earn. وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And you will not be asked about what they did. وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارَى تَهْتَدُوا And they say, be a Jew or a Christian and you'll be guided. What did I just tell you all this whole past lines? Is Allah Ta'ala saying? قَالُوا كُونُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارَى تَهْتَدُوا Be a Jewish or be Christian and then you'll be guided. Oh, bhai, didn't we just tell you? Nobody said Jewish. Nobody said Christian. Musa never used the word Judaism. Esau never used the word Christianity. Abraham didn't use the word Abrahamism. Yaqub didn't use the word Yaqubism. Muhammad didn't use the word as Muhammadism, Muhammadinism. Everybody used the word Muslim, Millat Ibrahim. Do not die but as Muslims. So what are you saying? Be Judaism or be Christianityism or whatever ism, and then you'll be guided. Say, rather, the way of Abraham. Hanifan, yani nothing else. That is our focus. And he was not from that. And another point, let me just add that. He didn't believe in this Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He was not from the mushrikeen. Where did this come from? You believe in Abraham. You believe in Isaac. You believe in Ishmael. Did any of them believe in Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Did any of them believe in that? Where did this come from? We're taking you back to something which is common. Ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum. Come to a common understanding between us and you. Allah na'buda illa Allah. Wa la nushrika bihi shay'an. That we should worship only Allah. And we should not ascribe. This deen is perfect, my dear brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam. This is Islam. Qulu amanna billah. Say, we only believe in Allah. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَائِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ And we believe that which was revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Yaqub and the children of them that came out. وَمَا أُوتِيَ مُوسَى وَعِيسَى And that which was given to Moses and Jesus. وَمَا أُوتِيَ النَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ And that which was given to all the prophets of their Lord. We do not differentiate between the message of any of them. Jesus didn't come with some holy ghost, holy spirit, holy God knows what. We believe in all of them and all of them came with one message. We do not differentiate. You are the one that differentiates that the God of the Old Testament is another God and the God of the New Testament is another God. The God of the New Testament says, I will take my son and I will slaughter him so that he will forgive all of your sins. You don't need to worry about all the rules of the Old Testament anymore. You could eat pork and no circumcision and no eating pork and, and, and you could do whatever you want to do and there's no more law because Jesus died for your sins and His death, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It doesn't correspond to anything. We believe in what was given to Moses and Jesus. And we, were, we believe in what was given to all the prophets. لا نفرق بين أحد منهم ونحن له مسلمون. Again, we do not differentiate between what any of the messengers taught. They all their religion is one, and we are to Allah only submitting. قل آمنوا and then فإن فإن آمنوا بمثل آمنتم به فقد اهتدوا. So they therefore, if they believe in what you believe in, meaning the way of Abraham. Then they have, then they are guided. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّهُمْ فِي شِقَاقِ And if they turn away, then they are in their own schism. Schism, yani they are in their own misguided. فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَالسَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ So therefore, Allah is sufficient for you and He is the hearing and the all-knowing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. This is the maqam for us to understand. Now you know what is the function of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is the maqam of Sayyidina Muhammad? That he was the dua and the tamanna and the wish and the desire of Ibrahim. And look at how Muhammad, this is a very this is an important reflection upon our Prophet. That what is he? Innama ana da'watu abi Ibrahim. Wa basharatu akhi Isa ibn Maryam. I am but the dua of my father Abraham and I am the prophecy of my brother Jesus. 
sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. May Allah ta'ala give us the understanding wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallah.